and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so welcome everybody. So um, I don't think we have anything that we need to add to the agenda because we got the agenda from you. <laughs> so, um, okay, so uh, um, can I have a motion to accept the agenda? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion so carry. But it's nice to have the chief and the lieutenant here. Yes, it's Aye. wonderful. Didn't expect both. Nice surprise. <laughs> we want a nice little surprise today. So you oh, okay. Right? Well, terrific. I hope it's a good surprise. Good. Would anybody like to speak <laughs> to any public comment? Ira. Um, you don't have to stand, Ira. You don't have to stand. <laughs> can you pick him can up? You, can you pick Ira up as he talks, or should he come up? Can you, you come can up to him? You can sit up here, Ira. We're, we'll, get you. we'll make room for you. Just so the mic can pick you up. Yeah. He's bringing the chair over so we can slide you. Take your time. Don't you worry. We ain't going nowhere. Well, he's trying to pull the chair out so he can slide it in for you. No, I just want. That's okay. You got that one, Ira? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Hi, Ira. Hello. Well, since we're down, Gene, if you want to sit here with us tonight. <laughs> no, like old times. No, no. no, I never sat up with you guys. I no, always sat on this side of the table. Even when you ran the police commission meetings? Well, that's different. So <laughs> then, I sat, then I sat in the corner because the chief had to watch the door. And I, thought, I wanted to be out of everybody's home. I wanted to be out of harm's way. Anyway, welcome tonight. Thank you for joining us. It's my pleasure. I don't know if you're going to be happy. But Go I'm for it, Ira. Huh? Go for it. I am. Um, when... Uh, Mr. Logan disbanded, for what I believe political reasons, the police commission. I kind of had mixed emotions. First, I felt we must be doing a good job in following our mandate successfully. Um, I believe this because Mr. Logan was not able to politically interfere with our mandate for his own benefit, and I also felt that the people backing this move are those who had a lot to gain by dissolving a functioning commission. Um, among those were the police union who could not force the commission to drop or reverse itself and went to Mr. Logan to override their decision, the commission's decision, on which the commission felt was in the best interest of the residents. Village, who use, in my estimate, 80% of the town services, who think that they should control the town police department because of their using that much of their service. The college, who did not like the fact that the commission did the research that showed they were misleading the public when it came to Park Point, um, and didn't want anyone with any kind of knowledge, doing any more research and having the ability to do that research. Um, village bar owners and downtown homeowners who get special service and we're afraid if the commission continues its research into distribution of services, the town board may have cut back on services to them or charge them. services, don't pay any taxes, similar to the college. Uh, on the other side, I felt upset that the town residents would have no access or complaints, knowledge of what was going on in their police department, and no longer had any input unless they were politically connected. me to bring this forward was that excuse me I made some changes um, was a question I have which I would like to direct to the chief if that's okay um, in the four and a half years that I served as police commissioner and in the three or four years prior to that meetings. 
I don't recall. Very specific that I don't recall it. I'm not saying it's fact. That anyone, any month went by without <coughs> a defensive action report, which is basic to oversight of the police department as to what, what they're doing and you know, looking at that. As a matter of fact, I recall in that category, um, I don't remember who the uh, liaison was at the time. She had been one of those reports. Jean? Huh? Jean? No, not Jean. Haviana? This goes way back. Oh. Uh, she's a lawyer. was questioning one of the reports. Kathleen Hill. Kathleen Hill. Right, okay, thank you. The lawyer thing came out. <laughs> and that's what an independent police commission is supposed to do. We got it verified, it turned out to be you know, legitimate and everything else. She had a question, which is what the function should be. Um, I don't recall if I was on the commission, on the commission at that time, I just observed it, but it's not important. You weren't on it. Problem and I think the question I'd like to ask the chief is for the last few months, from uh, the town board talking to the chief and him discussing, I don't believe there have any been any defensive action reports. I personally have a problem with that if it's accurate because I really can't believe. Well, I can answer right now. Here you go. Here's the stack of them right now. So here's June's report. So we get defensive action reports every month. Here, here they are. Here's June's report. There's defensive action. So fine. Then, then on the tape, it says it wasn't okay. at the meeting, and that's what we put it up at the meeting. And you can check the tape. Mm -hmm. The chief said there were no defensive action reports, and that was June. July, you didn't have a meeting, so I can't discuss that one way or another. But May also. I, I know that's what you said in May. I, that's what you said in June on the tape. And I, I July, don't have, I can't talk about okay. it because I don't know. Well, then I would, are, you, are you finished? Yes. Okay. So would you just, like just to answer now, or do you yeah, want so to I'll just do a quick little okay, answer. Sure. Um, when he was on the commission, when you were the, on the commission, uh, there were certain times where we didn't have a report for that month. Um, and actually there was a time where a comment was made like the officers were good this month. And I said, no, that means that everybody was, you know, compliant when they were placed under arrest. It's, you know, the officers don't, you know, their goal is not to have defensive actions. Um, so it's not that they're being good, it's that people that are being arrested are being compliant and, and listening to the, uh, the orders from the officers. So there's no need for it. Um, I have... Uh, June's report and as I well as May's here. So May's in, report. In May you did have we, we had both. We had four in May. We had uh, one two. in uh, one in June. It looks like one in June, uh, four in May. I don't know because I don't have those reports in front of me. Uh, it's possible there were none, or it's possible there were some. I, and maybe we can look at the minutes from uh, the last meeting and what was said. Um, I do read them out still. I know there was one meeting that I read and you had talked about which ones I read first, if it's defensive action yeah, or that was a while the ago, yeah. accommodation. Because you switched um, it around. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> there was a mentality of, well, do the defensive action first and end with a good note with the accommodations. Um, and sometimes I mix them up, depends on how I put the stack together. Uh, but I can tell you that we're still doing defensive actions. Uh, if we have them for that month, they're being reported. And I do the printout the same way. The report's done the exact same way. There's a couple of things that aren't included in this, um, street light reports, but it still, gets, yeah, but that's, still gets distributed to the boards and central health centers. The, you, your reports, Chief, if I may, that's, you know, yeah. whatever you got rid of, that's the town board's decision mm -hmm. about care. The only thing that, as I said, that, <clears throat> that bothered me was the fact that there were, well, on the tapes, and we look at what the Chief mm -hmm. said, there were no defensive action reports. That's what's there. Um, whether you have them, don't have them, whatever, I don't know. I just know what's on the tape. I just know what was said. And that's what bothered me. The rest of the reports, you know, the, uh, the reports necessary, in my opinion, because we've always argued about this, to do a good oversight job. Because it gives you, if you read them, 
I mean, I can't help if nobody reads them. I can't help if you know, I've never read them. But if you read them, it gives you good insight as to what your offices are doing, how diligently they're doing it, uh, if there is a particular problem on, you know, on a shift or, or whatever, and they're very useful <coughs> reports. But that's not your choice. It's not the most if it's good for the commission, uh, just to save some time, because again, I don't have sure. it in front of me, I will look at all the defensive actions per month, and I'll bring that number next month. And if okay. there's any zeros, I'll explain okay. if there's okay. if there's numbers for all of them. And again, you know. I'm just saying mm -hmm. what I have. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Good for and you. And as the chief said, I you know when I when I said I didn't remember, you know. That, that's okay. I mean, you yeah. brought it to our attention. The chief oh, said he'll yeah. check it out. And I just yeah. want to, in response to. Um, the public does have the ability to still come, and as a matter of fact, I have had people call me directly, and um, Lieutenant Lucchese even knows that um, I've had some people call me. I've called him in beforehand. He and I spoke so I could understand the issues. Then I've met extensively with residents on issues, then followed up, you know, in certain mm -hmm. cases and stuff. So, you know, there's still a commission. We are the commission, and people do feel <laughs> comfortable calling, and they do call me, you know, so... Um, you know, I just don't want you to feel like that all of a sudden because we're the commission, all of a sudden people are afraid to call. People are not afraid well, to call. They are calling. You know, Susan, I can yeah. understand that. And there are some people I have spoken to mm -hmm. who are afraid. And I'm, I'm not going into it, you know, okay. if you want to know private. And, and I do need to respond just because for some reason you seem to want to point me out. I'm just going to point out I'm okay. one vote of five. So if you believe I did all this on my own, I don't want any comment back from you because it's not needed. But uh, if you believe I have the power to do all that, uh, thank you. <laughs> I say thank you. I but you uh, I, I'm one vote of five. And uh, the votes were all uh, unanimous. <coughs> so uh, um, I, well, yeah. I, I'm glad, I'm glad you feel that I have that power to, to move <laughs> four members that are Ne will never, none of these members here will ever be identified as individual thinkers. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, Jeff. <laughs> Man, you just, you that just was good. my point. Yeah, there you go. So, uh, everyone, I'd like to close the meeting. <laughs> uh, what have you there want? There you go. See, there you go. There, see, I were, you were correct. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> okay. Do you need help getting up? No. Take your time. Take your oh, chair. Oh, yeah, I, I usually do. Why don't you just pull the chair back and sit on that chair? We don't need it. No, no, this is good. Yeah, I would just push the chair back. Okay. Stubborn. <laughs> you don't know that by now. I can vouch for that. Is. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so, Chief, um, you want to um, talk about the uh, dictaphone? Uh, sure. Uh, I think it's the first on the agenda. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, we met with uh, the. Uh, with, uh, I met with Rich Jeremiah, who is the representative for the company that services our dictaphone. Um, the current dictaphone that we have is about seven to eight years old. Um, it's basically they're on fourth generation software. We're on. We're still using the first generation, and it's kind of on its last legs. Um, how much longer it's going to last? You know, I couldn't say. For you, for what you don't, in case you don't know, the dictaphone is it's a piece of hardware that records all the phone calls that come into the station as well as all the radio transmissions back and forth at the station between our people as well as the county transmissions. Um, and state? And anything, any, we, we program it what it's going to record, but it would, it, right now we record um, all of our transmissions to and from the station as well as the county 911 uh, radio frequency. We record a number of our phone lines. It's it's an invaluable piece of hardware um, when it comes to investigations and um, and trial and prosecution. Uh, we've used it in pretty much most of the cases that we've ever prosecuted uh, on the county level, um, and it's also helped in some circumstances as far as liability with the department. We had a, an issue back in 2010 uh, where an allegation was made and. You know, that phone call or a phone call that was made was, you know, helped us. Um, but basically, the software is is on its end life, and we would like to purchase a new dictaphone. Do you know um, uh, what budget line you want to do that out? Oh, okay, yeah, well, we'd like to use it. Yeah, if, if I can so, just add something no, real quick, also, uh, we had a dictaphone line in there. We had a lease on one that um, finished up actually on this year. We had an issue with the dictaphone last year where they were able to, the company was out of service for about over a week. They were able to take it back and actually rebuild certain things in it. 
but because it's so old now, they don't even have parts for it. This year, they were able to, they didn't even give us a full year of what that uh, service would be. So they only, they charge us less money this year because they can't really fix anything. They can just give us the service support. But if something goes on or crashes, it's done. Um, so what we did was we, we've had a line in here for voice recorder. Uh, the voice recorder, it's under the, uh, the lease line. Um, it's the uh, first page, I believe. The 4700 line, 0.47. If you look under a lease and then it says uh, voice recorder, it was uh, 39.82 is what was uh, being uh, spent okay. a year. Yes. Um, that, this was year the, that, was that was for the lease. That was for lease. Correct. Um, but now that we pay for just the support service for it this year because they're unable to fix it, so they didn't, it's not the whole fee. Um, so what we want to do, we looked at replacing it, which the lease to change just to put a new system in, the lease would only be about $200 more per month. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, $200 more per year in a lease. So the lease would go from 39 to about 41 or 42. A lease, a uh, five-year lease would be 4000 Yeah, so it would just go up just a little bit. So you wouldn't even see a difference, and we would just have them change the unit. The reason why we're coming to you is that we have the ability to purchase the unit and then just pay for the service agreement with them, which would be half of what we spend right now. Um, and what we would like to do is use the remainder of the money from that lease line to purchase this, as well as using some funds from the ammunition line. Because we've been down on officers for the last year, we have a surplus in that that we can get by with the ammo we have for this year, and then next year come back up and get our ammo bought where we need to be. Um, but we can make it work this year by using some funds from the ammo line, using the remainder of the funds from this line to purchase it for, I think it's $7,200. The purchase price, with software and hardware would be 7200 Over the four-year or five-year lease term, if we were to lease it, we would spend $3,000 more. Again, it's over a five-year span, but if we save $3,000, we can find money here. It's going to cut our budget back $2,000 every year in the budget line to keep that up and running. We check with Sergeant Butler, and there he has enough ammunition for us to get through our fall range cycle. Um, and then he'll replenish for the for I next know, year. I know last year I remember that the ammunition line, the ammunition with the extent, the cost of ammunition went up exponentially. Um, are we expecting a big increase again this year or should it level out? It, it, ammo actually came down a little down? bit recently. Not much, but um, but that can change overnight mm -hmm. depending on what's going on. So you guys had 8,500 in that line, so you spent yes. none so far. Like 20, 2,500. Yes, it's still in there. He hasn't spent, he, he ordered, and what he says he can get by with to get through this the year. 2,500. The 2,500 will leave us about six grand to use towards this. And then after the first of the year to get ready for the spring qual qualification, then he'd have to place the order. But gee, this, well, that's not going up though, it's going to be the 85. Okay. This, this device is simply storing conversations, right? It is radio conversations uh, as well as our phone line conversations. But everything is stored, it's just a storage device. It's a, it's a storage device. They do go into tapes and a hard drive. Um, okay. This price is actually changing the whole system. It's come a long way. Every, Every few years is an update. We used to have the big reel with tapes. Right. Um, you know, but so now it's changed. It's SSDs. Correct. Solid state drives. Yeah. And, it, and there's actually a server for this unit, so everything is downloaded into that system. And it includes some type of data mining, so you can. Yes. Why can't you share that with the town of Lloyd? Well, you pay based on the size and the channels. And I know we use most of the channels, and I think we're right in that same ballpark of bringing the channels because you can expand and buy a bigger unit. You also have to wire your radio systems into it. Um, I don't necessarily know if we could wire the town of Lloyd's There's radio. No way to do it. Have you thought it's about trying to do it, share service we can, somehow? We can ask. That's an off-site location. Again, I don't know how the phones would tie into it um, because it is in-house tied into our phone line system. Right. But with technology the way it is today, it's pretty easy to get a piece of technology to report whatever you want, I no think, matter how many lines there are. I think what I'd be concerned with, and we can check with the company, is the security end of it. Um, I wouldn't want the ability for another agency to be able to log in to a system that has access to everything. Um, you'd have to be concerned with 
you know, investigations. You'd have to be concerned with the possibility of deleting some of this information, um, things of that nature. So, but again, I, we've never asked a question about sharing that with an outside agency. My guess is because companies like this want to sell to different towns and different municipalities, I'd be surprised if they say you can share it with multiple agencies. The frequencies that can be shared are the ones that are MRD, which is a statewide frequency. Um, the county 911 frequency, which everybody is recording that anyway. Um, but again, for us to then have to go to another agency saying, hey, we need to look at your line so we can get our, for example, we had um, the last case we had uh, with uh, the shooting. Uh, we actually, the DA's office wants every transmission um, for that case, which is the initial call, uh, every transmission, which is very detailed, where if you have an officer keying a mic saying, I'm out, we need that. If you say, you know, did you notify the lieutenant, we need that. You know, we need every bit, no matter if it's received, you need that. <laughs> so it's a... It's even a even phone calls. I mean, we had to go back for the Rodriguez on the side. I took me hours because we were looking for several particular phone calls that were made. Does the new system have a better file system for retrieving? Yes. 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 Yeah. Which is an important thing because with the new system, you can even group times and download and save it all to a disk where right now you have to save each individual to a wave and then from a wave to a, uh, to a file. So it's time to um. Paul Hanson, who's the supervisor of Lloyd, you know, and I happen to be friendly. We were legislators together. And Paul and I have talked about getting together to start talking about some of the shared services that we could do, whether it's with highway, whether it's with police or whatever. So we are going to have that conversation. But I could understand for this particular piece of software, we're possibly sharing with another you know, department when you're talking about your calls and your, you know, where there could be a concern. I could sort of understand that. Well, just to let you know, everything's being shared in a cloud now. You're like a cloud. And so data is going to be basically managed by a bunch of big companies. So eventually, it's going to be shared anyway. But in, until it gets there, I guess you need this piece of paper. Probably the next time around, it's maybe it'll be available. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's in the cloud. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and that's why you don't that's why the okay. model is yeah, going okay. away no, from no, the money's good. individual okay. pieces yeah. money's all there. everywhere to just one central source that it would be accessed. Obviously, the security and all that stuff is a big piece of the job. Yeah. That's what's coming. You're going to be able to have a piece of a machine, you know, mm -hmm. which you can use that will be dedicated to uh, well, have the, the uh, adequate security that you want for your work. I can look at this. Even our record management system eventually is going to that. I would recommend you start looking at that for the next cycle. Yeah. I and mean, we can ask the question now if that is a doable thing. Um, the problem with that is, you know, is, can it be done? And the other problem will be, is there another town that needs it right now that's willing to share with us? Um, you know, because you have individual boards that have their own minds and ideas also. But it's a question we'll ask. Um, you know, basically, rather than just saying, all right, we're just, you know, it's a continued lease. It's just going to go up another $200. You might want to also, Chief, go back to the company because they're thinking about it, too. They have to be thinking about it. What about yeah. the, the uh, about wolf? About sharing. About sharing. Because if they, if they don't think about it, they're, they're going to lose business in the future. So maybe Dick the Bull has some, some ideas for a next generation piece. We can ask that on the cloud. So, I mean, do we... Do we agree that, I mean, with the, uh, I mean, let me just ask one question. If you buy it because of the evolution of how things, you know, um, change so much when you're talking about technology, are we better off just leasing so, if, like, you know, like the new it's, system the, comes in the, the, the changeover is very easy. One of the, one of the reasons, or one of the, because the, the server in this, that we're currently using for this dictaphone is, uh, runs on Windows XP. So the software itself is not supported anymore. It's, that's one of the biggest issues. Um, we would be transitioning, we, uh, we would be purchasing a new server. Um, any updates would be um, 
they'd be able to update the server or the program itself um, wirelessly right over the you know from the internet um, and there really is no um, there's no downtime with that um, and there's no in terms of you know other things that we're looking at in terms of new computer systems and all the stuff we've been talking about this is completely independent really and yeah. you know they've never been integrated in any way with like you know, one bigger that. server or whatever and yeah, we've actually yeah. asked that because we just put a server in right, right. and they said it has <laughs> to be a standalone we, know. <laughs> <laughs> we all do we all feel it go ahead no i asked may i uh, may one of the things we talked about was initially with the price and the, and the quote uh, that this com the company gave us was with uh, purchasing a new server through them or going out on our own or even using our current and existing server. Uh, I spoke to May. She absolutely advised against using this server, our current server that we just bought for this purpose okay. uh, because it does take a lot of data. Um, I asked her about whether or not we buy a server through her. Um, and then if it be that be more cost effective and she said no she said really the, the savings would maybe be a wash because you have to then get that server program and ready for and this as well as now you're introducing another vendor into it whereas everything comes now from the one company and with the cost, again, what we're thinking is that, all right, it's a, was it a five-year lease? Five-year lease. You know, it's $3,000 in five years. It's not a great deal of money, but it's still $3,000. Everything, everything helps. And everything what helps. I would do if it was my own home and I was doing it, I would, if I had the money available, I would buy it and then what cut the budget every month. Uh, well, so per year it was $3,982 a year. A yeah. year. Yeah. That was the lease prior, but we did not pay that full price because they can't. Well, that was for service and maintenance. Yeah, service and maintenance is also available on it. And it's, I saw uh, a lot of that up here, yeah. and I don't charge for it. <laughs> there, there's actually, they had data off of different programs for the maintenance agreement and service agreement, where it could be 24 hours a day, and it's more, more money. Um, we elected to go with, you know, during the business day is going to be fine. If it's something that we need to retrieve or get something going, that's that's gonna be fine. You think of how many times we've used the service when we needed it in the middle of the night, and you know we've gone where the thing's been out of service for over a week, um, which is bad. But you know that, that's what we had to deal with. Um, and because that system is so old, they tried to give us something to temporarily get us through with a couple of the lines, and that didn't even work. No, it's time to move on. So, yes. would uh, somebody like to make a motion to? Uh Amend the budget and um, authorize the purchase of the dictaphone. So moved. Yes. Second. Okay. Um, do you have uh, you have how they went on paying for it and the lines and stuff? What do you need the chief to uh, um, have to read? I think I have it all. I have that it's coming. Police line for dictaphone. Voice recorder. Okay. Well, Voice so recorder. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Motion so carried. We'll actually reduce our voice recorder line for next year, too, by about okay. 2000 Terrific. Well, I'll see that next week when I get the budget, right? Yes. You can have it tomorrow. Oh, good. Terrific. Good. A day early. That's great. <laughs> what? A day early. <laughs> That's terrific. Good. Thank you. Well, I've been working on it for the last month and a half already. Yes, I know. Good, good, good. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully you. Never mind. I won't. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> oh, man. <What? laughs> um, okay. So next on the agenda is um, you want to review the reports. Yes. Uh, any questions in last month's report? We'll do last month's first. Sure. That's uh, June yes. or May's? Uh, May's report. Okay. Maybe you see his glasses. I can see so much better with these things. <laughs> it's amazing, huh? It's really sad when it gets to a point when you really can't see without. I started here with scary. nice, long, wavy, dark hair, not needing these uh, things. You can't see when you're wearing the glasses. <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and Chief, and I started when my daughter was six, and she's now 24, so let's. <laughs> oh, yeah. Remind me of that, too. Uh, all right, for the uh, month of May, we had four defensive action reports. That are. <laughs> I'm, I didn't, I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Four defensive action. The first one, uh, there was one report filed on it. 
uh, had to do with a 21 years of age male, uh, black, 5'10", 180 pounds. Uh, he was charged with uh, resisting arrest and uh, disorderly conduct. Um, the officer attempted to uh, place the defendant uh, under arrest for disorderly conduct. He attempted to flee, uh, was physically directed to the ground using an arm bar. Uh, he became combative while on the ground and refused to comply with the verbal directions. Um, the officer uh, delivered a strike to the rib area with the fist, and he was then uh, became compliant. He was handcuffed, nothing further, uh, no injury reported. The second uh, defensive action, there was two reports filed for it. Uh, involved a 65-year-old male, 5'11", uh, black male, six, 165 pounds, medium build. Uh, he was charged with resisting arrest, disorderly conduct, and harassment. Uh, we're conducting a welfare check on the individual. Uh, that we received, and when the officers were there, he became combative with the officers and violent towards the officers. Uh, he reviewed, <coughs> refused to comply to verbal commands and uh, began to attack the officer. Uh, the first officer uh, used an arm bar, physically directed him to the ground, where he continued to fighting. Uh, a second officer, assisting to uh, handcuff the subject, uh, was grabbed, uh, he grabbed the officer's shirt. The officer struck uh, the subject in the arm uh, with his fist, uh, at which time the person released the grip. Uh, he was eventually arrested and charged and also transported uh, to Kingston for an MHL evaluation, mental health uh, evaluation. The third one has one report filed, a 27-year-old male, white, six foot, 180 pounds, medium build, charged with disorderly conduct and unlawful possession of marijuana. Uh, he observed the defendant exposing himself on Main Street. Um, he attempted to flee from the officer. Um, he was taken to the ground and advised to stop resisting and placed his hands behind his back where he was uh, cuffed without anything further. The fourth defensive action has three filed with the report. Uh, individual 48-year-old male, uh, white, 5'10", 180 pounds, medium build. Um, uh, the officer, when, excuse me, uh, the officers responded to a uh, property damage auto accident. Um, the person uh, was having a medical condition and wasn't able to, uh, wouldn't comply to the officers, uh, began to be combative with the officers. Uh, the officers tried to uh, actually get rescue squad for him. Um, it ended up afterwards that he was having a medical issue. That's why he was combated with the officers. Uh, but the officers used a, uh, a wrist lock to take control. Um, another officer assisted, helping him direct him to the ground uh, for handcuffing. Um, they had to put shackles on him because he was kicking at the rescue workers and the car. Uh, and again, the third officer just assisting in it, also assisting with an arm bar. Um, to gain control of the subject while he was being transported uh, with the rest of the squad. Any questions for the May report on that? Um, just look at um, Any questions? No. I have uh, three letters of accommodation for the month, um, one of which is from the uh, New Paltz Rescue Squad, uh, from uh, the President, uh, Lauren Rooney. Uh, on behalf of the New Paltz Rescue Squad, I would like to thank you and everything you do to make our job easier. We value the professional and incredible important first responder medical care we provide, you provide to your patients prior to our arrival. Your willingness to carry our gear, retrieve equipment, do CPR, help load and carry patients, and assist with patient care is appreciated. Most importantly, you keep the scene safe. Uh, you keep the scene and us safe. We will uh, not do our job as successful without you. We look forward to continuing to work uh, with you and caring for our residents and visitors of the New Paltz community. Um, 
that was very nice. Came from the rescue squad and uh, also came with a little basket of snacks, which is always appreciated. <laughs> um, the second one uh, is a letter from uh, superintendent of the state police. Uh, basically, I, I sent a thank you letter uh, to agencies that assisted us in the homicide investigation. Um, this is a response back from the superintendent of the state police. Thank you for the correspondence dated May 1st, acknowledging the response and assistance rendered by the New York State Police during the fatal shooting homicide investigation of the town of New Paltz on April 20th, 2014. I am pleased to learn that the troopers and investigators from the New York State Police were professional, cooperative, and able to assist your agency in the course of this investigation. I will share your gratitude and correspondence with Major Patrick Regan, uh, Troop F Commander, and uh, members of the Troop F. Thank you again for taking the time to share your remarks. Um, and the second one, or the third one, is from uh, Patrick Regan, uh, you know, just thanking us also for the letter as the superintendent did, and a person of just, uh, you know, just great working with us and being assistance with us. Um, we have a great working relationship uh, with all the agencies that we work with. Um, this investigation, as I spoke about in the past, was just a perfect example of uh, you know, the relationship that we share and the benefit to the community when we work together. That's great. So, anything specific about uh, reports for May? Okay, what are we going to June? So, June. Okay, June, we had one defensive action report. Uh, one report was filed. Okay, thank you. Good luck. Take care. 37-year-old uh, male, uh, white, 5'11", 200 pounds, medium build. Okay, wait, I'm sorry. Before you just move forward, um, on your um, um, detective division, when it says closed, exceptional. What does exceptional mean? It can mean prosecution declined. There, there, we have arrest, closed, uh, closed by arrest, case unfounded, closed exceptional, warrants issued. Um, exceptional is, for example, an unattended death. It's closed exceptional that it, it determined to be a natural cause. We only have a, we only use, I think, three or four, four or five delineations, and that's mm -hmm. one of them. It, it's basically a case that's been closed uh, in a way other than an arrest or a warrant or, is un, or unfounded. I'll ask you more about this particular one later, but go ahead. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Um, defensive action, uh, again, uh, involved a 37-year-old male, white, 5'11", 200 pounds, medium build. Um, the officers respond to a dispute with a knife. Uh, we received a call, basically, that there was a, a, an incident taking place with a subject with a knife. Uh, when the officer arrived to the scene, the uh, subject was standing by the car. He drew his service weapon and uh, ordered him to uh, show his hands. Uh, once it was determined that he did not have a knife in his possession, uh, the officer holstered the weapon and continued the investigation without further. There were no charges. Neither party wanted to press charges against each other for the incident, and uh, the matter was resolved and closed. Uh, we have two commendation letters for the month. Uh, first one uh, is written from Sergeant Scott Butler uh, based on a conversation he had with a male uh, in the community. Um, while at a local establishment, the gentleman uh, offered to buy him a cup of coffee. And while outside, uh, the individual mentioned that he's lived in the community for since he was 10. He's in his 60s now. Uh, stated that uh, we do a very good job policing our community. Uh, he went further saying that we conduct ourselves more professional in a more professional manner than we have in 15 years um, or 15 years ago. Uh, and Sergeant explained to him how we uh, really push community orienting policing uh, to our officers, and he says it shows. Um, and he offered to share this with us. Uh, it's always great to hear things like that. Uh, you know, whether it's pro or con, you know, it's nice to get feedback. Well, I appreciate it, but I, I, no. I pass it right on to the officers. No, no, no. <laughs> but you, you, you've been working in our lieutenant. During, <laughs> during our term, we decided that we need to change the image of this and work in these forms. I was always concerned diligently to change the image to something positive. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. 
I do always say that you can leave the horse to the water, but if they're not going to drink it, but our members are drinking it and they're doing a great <laughs> job. So I'm, I'm proud of that. I think 15 years ago, people weren't that happy with the chief <laughs> at the time. I think you're right. <laughs> um, I received a uh, another one, an email from uh, actually a town uh, like employee. <laughs> Calling to say thank you very much for uh, her son had broken down uh, with his car. Um, basically, goes into saying how one of our officers responded, uh, got a local tow truck company within 10 minutes. They were told AAA would take about uh, you know an hour. Assisted with uh, emergency lights to keep the vehicle safe and get them moved with a tow truck within 10 minutes. Uh, this was Officer uh, Gina DeSisto. Um, she didn't have her name, but I looked up the case. That's who it was. Um, I just wanted to extend her personal thank you. Her demeanor was exactly what is needed in that situation. No attitude, no aggravation, just helpful and kind. Um, so uh, please pass on her gratitude. So again, very nice work from the officers. How did the fair go this year? Uh, not bad at all. I think we only had one arrest out there. Yeah, maybe we had a couple of them. Few. Yeah, we had, we had a, a couple, a few arrests. Nothing major. We had one that was a pet larceny, which also had a resisting arrest attached. Um, a couple of alcohol related things that occurred out there. Not with our officers. <laughs> any, any new trends? Um, no, I don't think so. No, just to, you know, anytime you have the fair in town, you know, it, it brings uh, you know different groups of people, and most people are there to have a good time and have fun. Sometimes alcohol gets the best of them because they do have a beer tent. Um, you know, but uh, overall, a uh, good work relationship with the sheriff deputies and the state police that are out there, uh, as well as their own security. And everything went pretty well with the um, 4th of July also. Yes, yeah. 4th of July was great. Yeah, Excellent group of people, people that were there. Um, no issues. It was actually very uh, well perceived and attended. Uh, we have uh, also uh, both the filmings appear to go very well. Yes. Uh, we might need to add a section, and, and I think maybe uh, the tenor or the chief need to sit down with Susan. I think we need to come up with a filming policy. Uh, I spoke to some from Discovery, and they went out and I directed them off to our police. Uh, they're interested in Discovery Channel, wants to do some filming here for a program. Uh, but I'm not sure yet. You didn't get anything back yet? No, me. nothing yet. So it, well, I, it's going to have to be reviewed, I think, by the two of you and also yeah. with Susan. I, I think it's going to take some more review because they're talking about a pretty large crew. Mm. Uh, but we do have another uh, small camera crew. I copied you both on yes. a small crew that's going to be on the rail trail. Uh, so maybe New Paltz is becoming a destination. I or think this. maybe we should try to expand on that too, Jeff. Yeah. I, I think maybe we should now, realizing this is a potential, try to offer them a little bit more service. So, they're getting a 30 percent break in time. You want film credit? The New York State has one. <laughs> but we're getting the, they're getting a 30 percent state tax break, which is bringing them up here. Yeah. We should and also do that thing for some of our restaurants. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I no, think no, there's no, some look, more work we I can mean, all look, do. I, with I, them. I used to actually, in between when I was no longer supervisor and before I became a county legislator, <laughs> for the three-year break I had from being an elected official, I happened to have been the film commissioner for Hudson Valley, and so I spent all my time. You know, working with getting film crews up here and doing all the kind of work that needed to be done. So what I think we could actually do is take a little time to put things in place, but then also maybe talk um, about promoting new ports from that perspective, because from an economic development perspective, people love it when film crews come up here. They just love it. And what happens is a lot of times, too, you get to hire a lot of the younger kids who can end up being interns on the crew, which then gives them credit on their resume. And there have been times with interns that we've brought in ended up getting jobs on really big TV shows down in New York City. And then also a lot of the, the, uh, the celebrities, they come up, and they love it up here so much, they end up buying a weekend home up here. And uh, you know they, leave, they use the resources of the local hardware store, the cheese shop, the whatever kind of thing. So I mean, this is the kind of thing from an economic development perspective that we as new Colts could, uh, you know, actually take a little bit, <laughs> take a little bit of initiative to um, actually promote new Colts, you know, in that medium. So we could talk more about that. That would be but great. Yeah, yeah. there's some more discussion. Yeah. That yeah. seems like a rather the, the discovery crew seems rather large, and they want to use actually this building. Oh really? Can they, yeah. can they do that? Yeah, their production. <laughs> no, about are they doing a demolition? <laughs> well, we actually, actually, if you actually yeah. want to hear the funny we, part, we like, I was here, and the reason why they like this building <laughs> is because they would have to do very little to set it up to make it look like the 1960s. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the actual quote from the who's the set? Who's the people that go around the, uh, the, the, the with location? The old location. Yeah, that's an 
actual so, practice. So, so maybe that could be the last thing we use this building for before we, we successfully move out. <laughs> so and, uh, I appreciate it because I think it will blow up. Well, well, no, but actually the truth is if it ends up being an ongoing TV Demolition show, it's an ongoing TV <laughs> show, I mean, they I can take this building over. This could be their location. But anyway, thank you very much for it. The two that went well, we got a couple more coming up. So I think there's probably needs to be something in the Kevin's point. I think there should be some more discussion. Maybe we need to get a policy in place. Because now we're kind of chasing it. We've been using Joe Moriello has kind of a boilerplate insurance. So I think maybe we might need to work that into your application or, or someone who gives out the application. Because uh, we do have to make sure they have insurance and riders. Oh, yeah, we could have some reception somewhere. No, no, we should. No, no, we should definitely. First of all, there's a lot of celebrities that live up in this area, you know, that are here anyway. But uh, that uh, there are a lot of people very interested in the Hudson Valley, very much so. Since the state did the film credit, um, there's also now some film studios not too far away. So there is more filming that's happening here. There's a you know increase, and it's it's good. For, it's, a, it's a good yeah. economic um, engine. So let's sort of work on that. So that's great. One okay. other thing on the contract talk that you had about that. Uh, the school district, were you going to bring that up tonight about that school so you can talk about it at the next board meeting? Just that they're working on the uh, the event thing for that school. Oh, oh well, I mean. And I think you had mentioned that you just wanted to uh, you briefly talk about it tonight so you can. That's uh, event contract. I, I'm just, uh, the reason I'm just a little confused. Sporting events, we. Well, which we, is, I, the only reason I was a little confused is because we have a thing with them also with the buses for other events outside of the youth center stuff. Oh, okay. I'm that sorry. I want to. Yeah. So, so in my mind, I had to like. Put everything, which well, just because I knew we were trying to work on getting something done with them to have a more generic thing for um, for the uses of buses, so when it's not just a youth center, but for the seniors, because we're doing more stuff for seniors and whatever, and um, and so you know it's outside the summer program. So you, I forgot about the events one. So yeah, bring that up, sure. Yeah, I, uh, basically every year we renew a contract with the school district. Uh, it covers they have a contract just like every we, we've always done in the past. It's just a matter of. Uh, changing the dates and continuing the program that we do. We offer uh, either one or two officers for their sporting events uh, that are laid out in a Schedule A, which has the dates and times and how many officers are needed. Um, that also includes the overhead and everything else like all our contracts do. So basically, if there's a new one coming out uh, that needs to be looked at and signed off on. So at your next board meeting, so we'll have that for, for, for the third, uh, for the, the 21st, August, I believe, yes. that yeah. meeting. Okay. So, uh, and maybe we can also get the uh, bus one done. So, and we're in favor of continuing the program. It works out great. Okay. So well, you guys like officers. being you guys like being at the event. I mean, it's good to have you at the event. It's always great to have officers there. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, although we don't have a resource officer, I think it's good for the kids to see police officers because it is a fun time. So it's not only yeah. another you know, bad event. So it's it's a nice thing. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so I think there's nothing else really. Just executive. Well, so so. What we need to do is um, have a motion to go into executive session for the purposes of um, personnel and discipline. I need the personnel is not a reason. So no, for, for, for personnel regarding discipline. There you go. <laughs> now it's so now three. So <laughs> Second. Okay, well, okay. Right. Five. Okay, um, you probably. We're going to start again. Yeah. yeah. Um, you need to, though, you're going to stay because. Uh, even though we're going into executive session, we might not take action, but then we're going to open up a town board meeting. You know, you know about that, right? Well, you weren't <laughs> looking to run out just yet anyway, right? We have to pay, we have to pay you for two hours right. anyway, right? Uh, yes, yeah, really right. Hey. Yes, don't go. Okay. <laughs> yes, thank you. Okay. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, um, all in favor? All right. Motions are carried. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Oh, we have a You didn't have it. I was trying to